everybody, it's Erin Reed and welcome to Erin Reed Makes. Today is all about Mod Podge Ultra. Mod Podge! <laughs> we are doing a collaboration with Mod Podge Plaid and the Designer Crafts Connection and where all of us designers are creating a fun project. So the links to where you can find all the other projects are going to be down below, linked to my blog and from there you can find the rest of the team. So what did I create? I created these really cool jars, a trio of jars. Here we go. Look at these. These are so cool. Don't you love them? And you can use them for a variety of different things from flower jars, from votive holders. Uh, to, you could put um, silverware and stuff in them too. All kinds of fun stuff. Great for outdoor party decor. And what's on them is sand. So what sand did I use? I use sand from Activa. Activa also has an amazing challenge. Link information will be down below about that, about using all their sand and different kinds of sand art. I transferred all of the sand into jars. So you're going to see the six different colors in the various jars and that way I applied it. So don't forget to go over to check out my blog and all the other amazing crafts that were made using the Mod Pod Ultra from Plaid from our Designer Crafts Connections blog hop. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button for further notifications and without further ado let's jump in and I'm going to show you how to make these fun decorated sand art jars. All right, so I am just taking a plain old jar, and this is a really cool tip that I learned. There's all different kinds of fancy taker offers of labels and sticky stuff. Guess what the best thing is? Olive oil. That's it. The olive oil acts as a remover of anything that is sticky on your jar, and it is fantastic. So I just rub the whole thing with olive oil, kind of use my fingers, rubbed up and down, and let it sit for a minute. It takes all the sticky, and then wash it with soap and water, and you get a clean jar that is label-free. It's awesome. For this jar, I did a spiral pattern and I got to show you, my daughter played too, she went off and she just kind of sprayed and then stuck stand and she did it in the purple. So here's the purple and then she also did it with the red color. So she just had some fun and was playing around and actually used an old jar that we also had the hearts on from a previous project, of which we then stuck the votive in there. It's really cute. So kids can do this too. I totally had her do it outside though. <laughs> So what we did for mine to get those spirals is we needed some sort of a mask. So what I have right here is I have the Style Tech Craft. This is the vinyl. So I'm just using the vinyl. And the first one when I did it, I just went around and I put them in as spirals. So you could do all different kinds of fun spirals. You could do pretty much any design. You could even cut out shapes. But for this, I just wanted to do generic designs. You could even cut this out and have like a big heart. You could have stars. You could have all the different kinds of fun with how you shape your, um, your mask. I mean, have fun with that. So I'm just taking this and I'm going to do straight lines. So if you notice at the top of this particular jar, I did put some ribbon just to kind of cover up the top. I'm going to do the same thing because I don't want to see the jar lid. Now you could get away with putting the lid back on, but then I feel like I'd need to decorate it. So this is just going to be an open jar. Now, and all I'm doing is I'm masking off sections. Now for this one, I cut my strips to be one inch wide. This one, I cut my strips to be three-fourths of an inch so not quite an inch I just felt like it was a little too big now I'm making sure I push these down so that way the adhesive and the sand doesn't get in there it makes nice clean lines pushing that in there and then I can come in and I can cut down here at the bottom and I can make a second strip and I'm gonna make my strips a little bit wider so I have more sand and less jar space but you can do that but really the design is totally up to you you could go horizontal you could go vertical and it looks like I got a little bit of sand stuck in and I didn't make that super straight so just have fun with your designs and how you want to play them on just making sure that they are all nice and sealed and vinyl is perfect for that to create a sealant so I'm gonna go ahead and keep on adding all my vinyl to my jar and create basically the pattern that I want to use. All right, so here I have my jar. I misjudged the space since I have a bigger space in the back. I could add a tiny strip or just leave it as a bigger space and maybe, you know, do something different here or it becomes the back of the jar. I mean, really, however you want to do that. Now what you're going to do is I have my little tiny tray. This is just to kind of collect a little bit and you need to decide kind of your color scheme. So I have one, two, three, four, five sections and I actually have six colors. I am definitely more of a green and a blue kind of girl. So I was debating just keeping with the color scheme, doing purple, blue, and green, and leaving the orange, the yellow, and the red off. But really, truly, you can make these whatever colors you want. This is just my color scheme and the ones that I like. So that's what I'm working with right now. 
All right, so making sure everything is nice and tight. I feel like it's kind of bubbling up right here at the seam. And that's partly also because this is so difficult to get a good, good seal on this is I will end up putting the ribbon up there just to kind of cover up any boo-boos that I might make. There are a couple of different types of this new Mod Podge Ultra, which is the spray form. One is a gloss, one is a matte. For this particular project, it really does not matter. They also come, if you notice, in two different sizes. There's a four ounce and an eight ounce, and these are all from Platt. Key thing with this when you're using it, Make sure when you are done, you pop this off and you rinse this because this does act as kind of like a glue. You want to make sure that this stays, this nozzle does not get clogged. So just rinse it in some water and it'll make sure that it sprays every time. So that's just a little bit of maintenance and that would go for anything that you would need to spray. All right, so first thing you're going to do is you shake it up really good. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to come in and spray. Now it's going to kind of drip. That was one problem I had with the spirals. I did have some drippiness and I could not make these strips too, too tiny or we're gonna have a problem. Now, if you notice it's kind of pulling off, it did not seem to make that big of a difference when I was applying it previously. And then come in and if you're not worried about how much sand you're using, be liberal. If you're wanting to be a little bit more sparse, that's fine too. You're gonna have some loss. So just spray, not spray, but sprinkle it down just like that all into the end and then kind of tip it and there it is now what you don't want to do is you don't want to go with your finger and go oh I'm gonna fix that because then you're gonna create patches as evenly as you sprinkle it on that's kind of where you want to go if you want to take a little bit more and kind of do this but really what it did for the first coat is kind of pretty much all you're gonna get for that and this just needs to dry it takes about an hour to set but I let mine set for two hours and then I pulled off the tape and then I let it rest overnight and it got hard and it is, look, it's not coming off. I mean, I could probably take a knife and scrape it off, but it's not coming off by the touch, which is really cool. I did green, now I'm gonna go to blue. So green, blue, purple, green, blue. So that works. I'm one short on the uh, a color, but that's cool. So just come in. Spray. And it is possible that some of your uh, tape might, or the vinyl might come off a little bit just because the sealant, the sealer is starting to kind of pull off. So gently put it on there. Give yourself a good coat. And I'm not worried about trying to rescue what is down here. Now I have a little bit of a boo-boo there where it didn't quite get a good coat. So I'm going to gently spray a little bit more. It's going to kind of shift. I might get a little bit more of a blob. You know, you kind of have to judge that. So I definitely have a thicker coat there now. And I have noticed, this is with my testing jar that I did, that I did some stronger, like I shifted it around. It still held. I mean, it's I actually kind of morphed it. So you could do a little bit of sand sculpture on this too. And this is there, but I feel like I could almost kind of come in and I can break it off. Um, I had to really push those. So that is kind of a cool thing if you want to do it, if you want to create a little bit of some like sculptural thing happening there. All right, gotta get the bottom of that. So the coat <laughs> cover my lid. I had an accident where I lost. That's why I have a lot less green than some of the other colors because it went overboard on me. So that's it. Just kind of spray. This is the very simple version. If you wanted to get more complex and how you're adding your sand, but this is just a very simplistic way of taking a jar. This is, I think, this was an old olive jar. Actually, you could go get mason jars, but I like the simpleness and the the sleekness of the jars that I just upcycle from food and then I know if it's a food safe jar because there's been food in the past then obviously I can put flowers in it or something so I know that it's got nothing in there and it ran through my dishwasher got all nice and clean you definitely can't run it through the dishwasher now and you'd have to be careful about how wet you got it but it would definitely work all right so there is that one I'm going to take a little bit of the sand that's down here you got to be careful not to mix too much you could also mix your sands up and create kind of a fun multi-tone but there is stuff in here so now it's starting to get kind of wet and clumpy so I would not want to reuse this too much up here I would if I was going to mix the sands I'd pour it off into another confection all right so now I'm back to the blue again or the first one what I do green so spray down and back to green and that, that's as hard as this gets so kids could definitely do this particular craft. I think they would have a blast with it and they can come up with whatever 
you know, designs they want. My daughter, we didn't actually, she didn't, I just kind of let her go for it. She didn't want to tape off anything. She just wanted to spray and she just put sand on it. I kind of showed her the basics and how to go outside and do it. I didn't worry about a tidy tray. It just went in the grass when it was done. It was absolutely fine. Now I'm going to come in with the big section and we will do the blue. And if you don't have a tray like this, just a bunches of papers that you could collect everything would work as well. Let this kind of dry for a little bit just to kind of show you where it's at. Here you can see, and the mask is still there. So it's kind of setting, it's doing its thing. All right, so the next step is, is I'm gonna pop this off right here. I'm just gonna go rinse this in my sink. I'm also gonna clean this out. And it's gotta set for about an hour before we pull off any of the tape. I really wanna make sure that it doesn't do anything. I don't accidentally hit it. And it will just take some time to set and then it'll be awesome. And I'll show you what that looks like. Magic of YouTube, it'll be one second for you. Okay, so if you notice, I made a second jar and that is finished. I'm not gonna remove that yet because it needs to have a chance to kind of rest a little bit longer. But this one has had some time. So now is the bigger reveal of taking off any of the masking. You do not want to let these go too long because if there's any, if you don't want basically to stick. If you've got any little boo-boos, now's a chance to kind of fix it while it's soft. You can take a paintbrush and I clean up a little bit and then the vinyl just goes in the trash. So I'm going to go ahead and keep removing all my vinyl, being very careful not to squish the other side of my jar and remove any of the sand that is still setting. So I nicked one little spot, but let's see if we can fix this. I'm going to do a tiny little spray. Actually, I'm going to spray onto my brush and this is just a little fixer upper and I'm going to like pat it onto here, just in the spot where I'm having an issue. It's going to look a little different. Good thing is this is at the bottom. So I'm good and I'm going to take a little bit more of my sand. I'm just going to do this very, very lightly on top of my paper towel here. Mostly because I don't have my little handy thing in place. Kind of fixed it there. This one still has a little bit longer to go. If I try to pull off the sand, the vinyl a little too early, it's got a problem. Now, this is where you can come in with like a wet paintbrush and kind of clean up any little boo-boos you have, but pretty much you want to let it sit. So here's what it looks like at this moment. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add in the ribbon at the top after it dries. So my jars have sat. I mean, this is the one that was already done. So that one's finished. This is the other one that I did, and I already put the top onto that one. And I had to change up which ribbon I used because I didn't think I was going to have enough. So I switched to just a burlap, and this is the same that I used on top of here. But take a look at them. They are looking so cool. I love it. It's awesome. Okay, so the next step I need to do is I'm going to attach some of my natural fibers. You could use rope, you could use burlap, you could use whatever. I just, I'm kind of grabbing a neutral color that would work well. And I am taking my super tight adhesive. This is an all purpose glue, it works really well. So I'm just adding a little bit of glue at the top here. And then I'm going to add my ribbon to the top just to kind of finish it and kind of clean it up a little bit. I'm probably going to go around two to three times. Links are all down below for you guys to get your supplies, whatever it is that you would like to have from the sand to the Mod Podge Ultra to the glue. I don't know if I can find the ribbons. That one, these are kind of old ribbons. I'm going to get some pictures of these outside so you guys can see what they look like with the votives in there. They're really cool and kind of together because it's kind of hard to see from this upward glance. That's why I've folded them over so you guys can see from this angle. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button and I will see you guys again later. Bye-bye everybody.